Steve Kime told us after the draft that um, you took the lead in uh, the DB drills during your pro day and uh, and kind of seemed to like run it. Uh, you, you were in line first and foremost. You took charge. He said he loved that leadership and alpha mentality. What do you say to that? He said it went a long way with them knowing that they picked the right guy. What do you, what do you say to that? Um, I say, I say first and foremost, thank you for noticing that. Um, secondly, that's how I want to care of myself going into the Arizona program. Um, that's how I want to, that's how I care of myself in life. I'm a father. So I want to, I want to lead by example. And the guys know that who I trained with at pro day and did the pro day with that. Um, I'm a leader and they fully trust that I can go first and set the, set the, um, set the tone for the rest of the group. So that's how I want to carry myself. And like, I want to set the tone and lead by example. Hey, Tay, Darren Urban from my uh, easycardinals.com. You talked a little bit when we talked to you before about the opting out process and the difficult decision there. Could you take us through a little bit of, of the mentality when you were going through it? I mean, was it was it a fairly quick decision for you, as difficult as it was? Did you have to think on it a lot? Did you feel like you had a lot of support uh, from the school in terms of making that decision? Um, I don't feel like it was a quick decision. I feel like um, I was trying to fight through it as much as I can until I made the decision. So just to briefly uh, sum it up, um, I'm I'm a starter. I came back in the first group um, to get ready for the season. Um, before we even knew about COVID, before we even knew what was going on, I, I put my life at risk coming back because most people stay back and then come to workouts. I was like, nah, I'm ready. I want I want to play football. I'm ready. So I come back. Um, I start working out. I get COVID. I get around my daughter. We have to leave campus. I go home. I give it to my mom, my sister, and them. I hospitalize my mom. So now I have COVID, my daughter has COVID, um, my girl has COVID, my family has COVID now, all because of me, all because of I want to play football and pursue my dreams. Um, I don't have resources at the time, enough money to even make sure everybody's okay. So it was a, just a lot on me, just weighing down on me. And at the time, like nobody knew about COVID, there was no vaccine. So it was just very hard on a, a kid um, from Georgia who all he knows is football and protect his family. So. Um, when it came down to it, I put family first, so that's what came in my decision. Okay, the next three, we're going to go to Catherine, Bob, and Mike. Hey, Tay. Um, did you and Marco know each other before, or are you guys just getting to know each other from the same draft class? That's a great question right there. Um, so Coach Bill at UCF, he coached Marco his freshman year when Marco had an amazing freshman year at Florida. And our coach Bill and our meeting was talking about Marco, like Marco, Marco, Marco. I'm like, who is this Marco KD okay, talking about? So I go search up Marco. I'm like, okay, Marco's a really great player. And then we get drafted, and it's just crazy that all I've been hearing is Marco, 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 and now I'm playing with Marco. So it's like, it's, it's just crazy. Like when, I, when he got drafted, I hit him up. I like, congratulations, bro. Um, we teammates. And I, just, I can't wait to, um, I can't wait to um, work with you. So it was crazy. It was crazy. Hey, speaking of that, Tay, this is Bob again. Uh, regarding you and Marco, um, I know that uh, both of you guys thought you should have went higher. Steve Kimes said the same thing. How, what, what, what kind of potential draft steals do you think you guys could, could be uh, along that line? I feel like me and Marco, um, one of the two best corners in the draft. Um, I know why my draft stock plummeted because um, the decision I made, and I'm not going to fault nobody but myself. But Marco definitely deserved um, second round, third round talent. He definitely a great season. He definitely a first round talent. So um, I think the Arizona Cardinals got two great DBs, and we're going to live up to all the hype, all the whatever circulation, we're going to live up to it. And I fully believe in us too. I know we work, uh, we're great people. And yeah. Tay, Mike Jarecki, Arizona Cardinals. Now that you've gone through the draft process, how excited are you to get out here and meet your new teammates and first impressions for the rookie minicamp? I'm so excited. I don't even think I'm going to ever leave the facilities. Like, I might stay there, to be honest with you. So, um, this is my long life dream, and I'm about to take fully advantage of um, every opportunity. And, 
I want to I want to be one of the fan favorites to Arizona Cardinals and the community. I want to be one of the guys people really look up to and can learn from and get motivation from and advice. I want to be I want to be all that for the Cardinals. Okay, up next is going to be Darren, Bob, and Catherine. Tay, so leading into the draft, and you you've mentioned a couple times where you kind of felt like your decision impacted where you were drafted and everything what, what was the discussion like with with the nfl teams going into it did they bring up not having that year last year or or is this just your gut that it, it cost you some time in, in the draft space in the draft so most of the i'll talk about all 32 teams so most most of the teams just want to ask why to opt out and 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 i think they just use it against me that i didn't play any games so um and that's okay. Like I said, that's okay. I knew, I knew that was, I knew in my head, like that, would, that, would, um, that might take place. But ultimately, um, the Cardinals believed in me. They believed in my decision of me protecting my daughter. So that's why they gave me opportunity. So I feel like I landed where exactly where I needed to be. Okay, it's Bob again. Uh, two things. Why uh, number thirty-two and on pre-draft rankings and internet scouting reports, did you did you read or were you curious to look up or listen to any of the comments made about you, good, bad, or indifferent? What do you feel about all that pre-draft hype stuff as it relates being a prospect yourself now that you've gone through it? Um, 32, uh, actually 32 chose me. Um, I didn't really get to pick my number, so and I, I wasn't gonna argue with whatever number they gave me. I'm thankful for the number. Um, and I'm a little, I'm a 32, I'm gonna live up to the legacy because I know a lot of great players have put that number on. So it's my time. Um, secondly, what's the second part of the question? I apologize. Oh, you said have I read anything? Uh, no, I haven't read it. I haven't read anything. Um, I haven't read anything good or bad. I just know a lot of people are excited to have me in Arizona and I'm thankful for that. Tay, with the opt-out being so directly tied to your family and like the week and a half after the draft, what's their reaction been like to seeing you finally at this next level, but knowing everything you went through to get there? Um, most importantly, they're excited for me, praying for me. Um, they knew that I I literally sacrificed everything to be the best player I can be. Um, they understand how much of a hard worker I am and, and they ultimately know what I'm going to do when I get to Arizona. So. They, they, they are more than excited. And for some of my families, they're going to be their first NFL game. So, Hey, we'll wrap it up with Darren and Bob. With with everything that you've been through in this last year, Tay, like what has what your workout kind of regimen been? I mean, obviously you weren't practicing or playing. So were you working out the whole time? Did you take some downtime to take care of your family before you got back into it? How did that all go down? Yes, sir. Um, I communicated with my agent. He didn't want me to overwork myself before I got to training. So I will um I had a schedule that I work like three days a week and the rest of those days I'm with my family. Um then January 4th, I landed in Fort Lauderdale and I was six days a week and get Sundays off um until for my pro day. After pro day, I took a week off. And then I went straight down to Boca and I started training with um Mika Fitzpatrick and his father. And after the job, I've been training down here with Coach Ford. So I'm a training guy, man. I put, I put all my chips in every day, every week. Tay, you, you obviously felt the, the huge impact that COVID can bring to not only yourself, but your entire family. I'm wondering, for as powerful as that was, how much guilt did you harbor about that? And the second question would be, you said you, you're going to become a fan favorite. How and why? I'm gonna come fan for it because of the person I am and I know how many smiles I can put on people's faces and like I told a fan on Twitter, I'm gonna always be the last like if it's a whole line of people want autographs, I would I would stay until the last person. Like this is my long life dream. I wanna I wanna I wanna this is what I wanna do. I wanna make sure I can use this platform to empower people, empower the world. Secondly, I don't have no um no really good uh, guilt feeling about my decision. 